Mill City Roasters presents Roast Along with Eliza Lovett. Ladies and gentlemen, Eliza Lovett. Hey there, welcome back to the Mill City campus. We're here in Minneapolis, Minnesota for another Roast Along. Tonight I'm gonna to be roasting a fully washed Costa Rica. Uh, and so I'm gonna be doing it here on this one kilogram roaster. I'm gonna let this come down to my charge temp of 370 degrees. And while I let that happen, let's just orient ourselves on this roaster. So I have my power on. The roaster is fully preheated. I do have my roasting switch here. That's our ignition. My gas control is over here. I have cooling and stirring, my fan and my stirring. We're gonna use those at the end of the roast and then my timer switch. Today I'm not gonna be using roast logging software. Uh, too many things to pay attention to. So I'm just gonna be using my timer switch and I'm gonna set my variable fan speed fairly low for the beginning of the roast so I don't suck away all of my heat. So I'm gonna set it to 30. And I have variable drum speed over here on the side I'm gonna keep that at a moderate 55 today. I have a full charge weight here. That's one full kilo for this one kilo gas drum roaster. And as it comes down to 370, I'm gonna throw these in the drum. I'm keeping my gas off for the first minute or so since that drum is really preheated. So, Let's see, as we come down to 370, here we go. Gotta make sure to get all of those beans in there. And now, we'll just watch that plummet for a minute. And then I will apply a little bit of gas around just a minute. I'm thinking I'll start pretty low with about 0.2 kPa, 0.3 kPa. But while this happens, we have a few seconds. So let's talk tasting notes. So you'll see some really beautiful tasting notes on this coffee today. I'm roasting this coffee, intending to use it as drip for the office. Uh, we've got a lot of coffee drinkers in the office, people who take coffee every which way, drink it black, drink it with milk, some of us even put sugar in it. So, I want something that'll really suit everyone and I felt like this Costa Rica was really gonna do it. So we're right around a minute. I'm gonna put a little bit of heat on, as I said, 0.3 kPa. And in another 30 seconds, I'll probably up that a little bit higher. So we'll come back to the roast over here. So, as I get to about a minute 30, I'm going to up my gas to, I'm thinking 0.9 kPa for now. Really get that coffee going and get it drying. So, while this happens, let's just talk some logistics for a second. You'll notice that uh, I have this handy dandy bottle here. It's not just pretty, it's also very functional. Um, I am all about safety when it comes to roasting, and uh, this is kind of literally playing with fire. So, I like to make sure that I have a plan in case something goes wrong. Chaff is highly flammable, and I have had many little smoldering chaff fires in my day. So I keep a water bottle, just spritz bottle full of water handy to put out any chaff fires. Also, if I had an issue in my drum, I could open up my funnel and just pour straight down the chute, just spritz some water in there and try to suppress any flames. Um, I also always keep fire extinguishers around, one really close to the roaster. I have one over on the column over there and I always have one between me and the door. So we have two exits here and I have one at each exit just in case you can never, ever be too prepared for a fire. So, we're about three minutes in, and let's go to the trier and see where our color is. I'm aiming for about 
five to six minutes to turn yellow here and we are still very green, which is to be expected. Feeling good about that. I have noticed that in the couple roasts that I've done of this coffee so far, I get to yellow in the time frame that I'm looking for and then I need to really stretch that, that nameless phase where the Maillard reactions begin to uh, get some body in there, some viscosity in the coffee. So I'm gonna do that in a couple ways. I'm going to uh, up the airflow at that point. I'm just gonna make one big sweeping adjustment. Um, and I also might even cut the gas back a little bit at that point. Awesome, four minutes in, feeling good. I do love that on these roasters, there's a nice big sight glass right on my door. And so I can just sort of peek at the color and see how quickly the beans are turning in the drum. Um, it's compared to the size batch that's in there, it's a pretty big window, which is really, really lovely to get a good picture of what is happening in the roaster without having to go to the trier. Because at this point, I'm not really looking for any smell. It's going to pretty much smell like hay still. Fairly green. I have noticed that this coffee uh, has been turning yellow around 330 degrees on my PID. So I can prepare for that. I always like to note these events. And I do have a place to take notes. I always like to record what I am doing. We're coming up on five and a half minutes here and also coming up on 3.30. So it looks like we're right on target. I'm gonna go back to the trier and check on that color right now. We're definitely getting yellow. I always call yellow when everything in the trier is yellow. If you've roasted along with me before, you'll know that I'm really adamant about being consistent in how you call these events. And I would definitely call that yellow. So that was around 334 degrees at 545. I'm gonna make that sweeping adjustment and go back and smell. Make sure that everything is consistent. Oh, I do love the smell of my yard. On this coffee, it doesn't just smell like bread, it's almost floral. It's really lovely. Whoop, bean down. All right, so as I said before, I also do want to stretch this Maillard out, these reactions. So I'm going to pull back on the gas. I recently uh, was chatting with my roasting cohort here, Derek, and we were talking about uh, different styles of roasting. And he was talking about how some people stay ahead of the roast and some people pull back on the roast. And some people are always pushing the coffee with heat and some people are pulling back. And that made me think about my style of roasting and has made me really think about how that applies to me. And I've been playing a lot more with this idea of pulling back on my variables. So what I just did there was pull back and move my gas pressure down to 0.3 kPa as I'm probably going to come into first crack here kind of early. So this is what I was talking about, where this coffee moves. So I'm at almost eight minutes and I'll probably start cracking here fairly soon. So I actually, I just bumped it back up. I'm being fickle today with my roasting. 
but I also am starting to hear outliers. So I call first crack when there are no more outliers and I hear a few pops in quick succession, which will probably happen here in a few seconds. And I've managed to get kind of right on target for where I wanted to hit first crack time-wise, which is around eight minutes and 30 seconds right now. I'm hoping to start cracking around 8.45. There she goes. All right, so it's 8.55 at 400 degrees on my PID. So, you know, not too bad. I am gonna go to my trier now and smell a little bit, see what's happening in there. And also, another thing Derek and I were talking about is the application of heat through first crack. And something he has done and showed me is uh, just turning your flame off and then turning it back on. So what I did was I just cut my flame. I'm gonna turn it back on here in just 15 or so seconds as a way to mitigate that heat. These beans are exothermic now, they are cracking. I'm trying to finish up this roast in about one more minute. So in a few seconds here, I'll probably start ignoring my PID and head to the trier, start pulling it, sniffing it, waiting for the most desirable smells, something that I'll want to drink tomorrow. I'm going to play my off and on game, again game one more time. This is, it, it takes some finesse doing this, uh, I've noticed, because I have stalled a batch, which always rough. But we're getting close here, so I'm gonna turn on my cooling and stirring. Oh my goodness, it's like, wow, that smells like Nutella. And I'm waiting now for the beans to be really smooth in there and oh wow that's like molasses and all right I think that's it ha ah, and at 11 11 nonetheless it's gonna be a lucky roast to have a feeling There they go. All right, so I dropped this one at 415 on my PID. I would call that in the light to medium range. And let's see, oh, I heard one more bean in there. Come on, little bean. Oh. There it goes, perfect. Now, I'm gonna let that cool for just a moment before stopping those arms and getting in there to spread out the coffee, let it really cool. And I cannot wait to cup this tomorrow. It should be really, really tasty. So thanks for joining us for another roast along. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel via the link below and follow us on Instagram at Mill City Roasters. Have a great evening.